Cybersecurity is one of the most dynamic and challenging sectors in the IT industry. IT decision makers expect their security budgets to grow in excess of 5% this year, which is significantly higher than the average IT budget growth of around 3.5%. Organizations will spend more than $100 billion on cybersecurity tools and processes this year. But are we any safer? The challenges faced by organizations in terms of protecting their assets against cyber criminals are several. First, the adversary is exceedingly capable and only getting more proficient with automation and AI. There's tools creep. It's estimated that on average, large firms have between 50 and 75 security tools installed to combat hackers. This, of course, leads to complexity and accentuates a talent shortage, which is perpetual in the industry and budgets are very, very tight, despite cybersecurity spending as a priority, CISOs, they don't have unlimited resources. As such, we often hear cybersecurity is a team sport. What does that mean? It not only refers to the responsibility of cyber awareness, i.e. the SecOps team can't go it alone, cybersecurity has to involve all employees, ecosystem partners, cloud vendors, and trusted partners to constantly remain vigilant and evolve defense posture. Hello, and welcome to the Special Cube Conversation, which is part one of a four-part series brought to you by Dell Technologies. With me today is Steve Henniston, Senior Cybersecurity Consultant with Dell. Steve, my friend, welcome. Good Thanks. to see you in studio again. Thanks, Steve. Great to be here. All right. People don't often think of Dell as a cybersecurity company, Steve, but you know you have security in your DNA. Can you explain kind of Dell's point of view on this topic? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, I do say a lot of the time that uh, you know, Dell isn't a security company in particular, but we're the largest infrastructure provider to, to co companies all around the world, right? And you can't practically sell technology today without ensuring that security is built in. So everything that Dell does, security is built into everything that we do. And it starts with our secure supply chain. Right from the onset, way at the beginning of the beginnings of Dell, making sure that the security is built in all along everything that we do from whether you're ordering your PCs or ordering, ordering your, your storage arrays or servers, delivering that with security in mind. All right, let's talk about this complexity problem. We talk about it all the time. Despite what we often hear, the consolidation of tools is a means of attacking complexity. Alex, if you, if you cue the chart, the data from our friends at ETR shows that the number of tools installed is actually increasing. Over the next 12 months, do you expect to increase or decrease the number of cybersecurity vendors in your stack? That was a question just recently asked just the other day of 321 IT decision makers. 51% of the customers said increase. 37% said say the same. Only 9% said decrease. And Steve, only 6% of that sample said consolidation was the way in which they were going to simplify their security stack. How do you respond to this data? Yeah, I just I think that a lot of the customers out there are really really want simplicity. Simplicity is the the goal of everybody, and I think that a lot of vendors or a lot of customers are starting to recognize the fact that um, for every new project that they take on, there's a vendor out there telling them that they can sell them a security solution to help protect that solution, and so that they're constantly customers are constantly collecting security tools, and I think they feel that in order to get their arms wrapped around everything that's happening is that they need to consolidate those tools to capabilities that perform the same operations for different tools throughout their organization. And they think the way to get there is to consolidate those tools and, and pull all that together. And, and our friends at ETR, we helped them do the survey, had a follow-up, like, why? Why are you using so many tools? And they basically said, look, we, we're using it to fill gaps and we, we like best of breed, and we think that's the best way to do it. And so as a result, you get that tools creep. All right, it's been said that if you have 10 priorities, you have none. And this chart really says it all. So this, this is the same 321 respondents. Which areas of information security are the highest priority at your organization in the next 12 months? So you can see identity with single sign-on and MFA, vulnerability management and patching, and endpoint with the top three with EDR and XDR. But observability, antivirus, zero trust networks, cloud security, posture management, web application security. And the interesting thing, Steve, about this is when you asked the executives uh, what they wanted most, they wanted to understand uh, what was happening in the organization. So observability, 
was very important to them. Vulnerability management and patching was the other piece that came up. And so depending on who you talk to, you got different different responses. What do you think? So I think what's, I mean, you're laying out the scenario perfectly. And what I think is happening is that as vendors speak to customers about technologies, they're looking at data like this and they're saying, what do, what do uh, customers think is mo most important? And because what you painted before, this dearth of knowledge within the security space, everybody's trying to get their arms around what's most important, what's most important for my, my environment. And because they don't know, they're bringing in a lot of different vendors to talk about, here's what some solutions that can actually help you in, in, in solve your problem. The challenge is every vendor, based on your best of breed commentary, right, is which vendor does what, right? So they'll pitch what they do best in, in, in that meeting. And um, a, a lot of these customers are just trying to figure out, you know, okay, well, if I go this particular road, I get this and this. If I go a, a different road, I get, you know, XDR, MDR, and I get something else, right? And so they still don't have the right answer because there's so many people coming to them because everybody's doing security, right? So many people coming to them with possible potential solutions that they're still trying to wrap their arms around what simplicity really means for their organization. And this is why CISOs and SecOps pros don't sleep at night. I mean, exactly. I'm not kidding. Yeah. You know, it's nights and weekends that they're just really on, on the front lines. So one of the problems we see is cyber pros, as we said, have so many gaps to fill. So it's natural that they find a vendor or a tool to fill that gap. That's what kind of the research shows. But it also indicates that a solutions approach to filling gaps might make more sense. In other words, instead of a tool within a particular sector of cybersecurity, for instance, like MFA, that com how can you combine MFA with multiple tools across disciplines to be more effective, to have a more effective approach? So Steve, what do you think about that solutions model? Can customers still get best of breed and that kind of cross portfolio solution? Yeah, I like the way that you te teed that up, Dave. For essentially, you know, Dell's perspective on security, right, is to look at three very important practice areas. None of them more important than the other, but if you take, you know, reducing your attack surface, detecting and responding to cyber threats and recovering from a cyber attack. And you look at those practice areas and you say, what solution do I have that enables me to help go solve these problems? And it's not necessarily looking at it through the lens of which one product solves one of those particular legs of the stool, but changing your perspective and looking at it through the lens of how can a tool help me do a bunch of these things? So picture uh, Dell's data protection uh, solution, for example, right? That solution provides multi-factor authentication, roles-based access, dual authentication. Those, all those things help reduce the attack surface of a data protection solution. We provide tools like CyberSense, who's a partner, um, to look at you know, what's in your backup and are there any threats there? So that's the detection piece. And clearly with our recovery vault, right, it's um, being able to recover very safe and securely. So it's one solution in your data protection space that looks at all three of those things to help you advance that security maturity that you have and keeping it simple, right? So it's one tool, it's not multiple tools doing the same thing. The nice thing is, is that when you've got a vendor like, like a Dell who can take a step back, and we've got a great services organization and they do an assessment for a customer, they can take a look at all of the challenges that they have independent of the customer, right? So looking at it with our skills, our knowledge of, of thousands of customers that we've seen about how what's their approach, what's the right approach based on budget, as you mentioned, based on need for the corporation, right? So are you in a, a regulated industry, non-regulated? Where are your biggest holes? And then looking at a solution from a, a technology and a process perspective. Right? So a best of breed solution might be the best solution out there, but is it the best solution for what you're trying to do and incorporate into all of your processes? And we can take a step back and take a look and help provide solutions that integrate with, with your infrastructure of what you're doing and put it all together so we keep it simple, help you advance that security maturity, and you know, no one vendor can do it all, right? Um, you know, provide a security solution that solves all your security problems. You really need to look at it, like we said, as a team sport, how do we bring all those folks together to help uh, advance that, that security maturity within your organization, knowing that cyber threats are always evolving. So I want to just make sure I understand this. So, so I can procure 
different tools through Dell, mm -hmm. correct? So you got you have relationships with a number of, of different partners. I can I can get access to those through a solution, get access to best of breed tools through you. I, I don't I don't have to bring my own tooling. Correct. I probably can if I want to. Do you have how does your services organization let's say I want to bring my own tooling. Will your services organization help me integrate that with your other solutions so that it is kind of one throat to choke? Yeah, so there's no requirement where you have to buy a, a Dell solution or whatever we're selling, right? The great thing, a, a part of our assessments is to come in and take a look at what do you have, what do you not have, and what are your, what are your objectives? What goals are you trying to fill? And then take a look at how do we integrate what you do have with some of the things that you might not have, pull it all together, and provide you a solution that is meet your budgetary requirements, isn't a rip and replace, right? Helps you evolve what you're trying to do without going that that you know take everything out kind of and so you 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 mentioned before or earlier at the top talked about software supply chain how was that resonating with customers is that something that i mean you know after the solar winds attack people really got freaked out about software supply chain is it a customers gravitating toward that how important is that to them i would say there probably hasn't been a, a executive briefing that i've had with customers where the supply chain hasn't come up right so it's, it's, it's one part of a multi-part problem. Security is very complex, right? From, from observability, like you said, to endpoint security, to how, do I, how can I ensure that the system that I ordered is the system that I actually bought and paid for and, it, and hasn't been corrupted along the way? And the, there is a bunch of checks and balances Dell puts in place along the way to ensure that when you, whatever you receive is valid. So one of the things we have is secure component verification. You can say, when I buy a PC or a server, I'd like to make sure that um, as that server is being built, all the componentry that goes in it is is marked and, and, and earmarked, and we send you a notification of uh, in, in a in a secure area in the cloud, where when it re when you receive it, where you can actually check against that secure inventory, that inventory that the system still has in it what was put in it the day it was built, and if it has, then you know it's secure, and if not, then it's it's you know there could be some corruption or or some challenge, right? One of the things that we didn't show in the data, but we, we've shared in previous you know episodes, for instance, of breaking analysis was multi-cloud and hybrid cloud was a big factor in terms of priorities for customers. So I'm curious as, you know, cloud has sort of become a first line of defense for many customers, but as we all know, the world is, is hybrid. Um, very few customers are all in on, on the cloud. Most, most customers, especially, you know, medium and large size customers have some kind of hybrid solution. And then you have this shared responsibility model. So how do you help customers? And the other thing about that is because of infrastructure as code, the developers are now, you know, you hear this term shift left. The developers are now being, you know, asked, acquired to, you know, help with securing infrastructure. And, you know, that line between, you know, what a cloud vendor does or the private cloud, which has a lot of automation in it. And then that responsibility shifts to, uh, the, the end customer. How do you think about that? Can you help with that you know, multi-cloud uh, complexity and with that shared responsibility model? Yeah, I, th I think as, as we've talked about uh, many times before is in this, in this security model, the skills gap that we've talked about being, being a critical challenge, it's important that um, everybody in the company Right, whether it's the developer, whether it's the IT infrastructure folks, whether it's the consumer or, or just the knowledge worker, have this level of knowledge about um, how security works within their organization. That's step one. Step two is when we do that assessment, looking at the different tools that you have and where they can be applied. Is it just the internal infrastructure? Is it on-prem? Can it be considered the same for cloud? Because the one thing you don't want to do is have multiple tools for multiple environments because that creates what? More complexity, right? So how do you look at all of that to ensure that you're um, having this, uh, similar tools that everybody can, that know, they know how to use them, right? They can, they can facilitate them, not just for their own need, but in a way that uh, serves the company for the, for the better. Sounds like you do some good work, Steve. Really appreciate you taking some time and uh, appreciate you being part of this series. Love to be here. All right, and thank you for watching part one of our four-part series on making security. Team Sports, this is Dave Vellante. We'll see you next time.